You have found Authentic Business Adventures, the business program that brings you the struggles, stories, and of course, triumphant successes of business owners across the land. Past episodes of the Authentic Business Adventures program can be found on the podcast link at drawincustomers.com. We are coming to you from the Sun Prairie Community Radio Studios, underwritten by Bank of Sun Prairie. My name is James Kademan, business coach at Draw In Customers Business Coaching, co-owner of Calls on Call Shared Receptionist Service, and author of the Bold Business Book, available on Amazon. I just felt like giving you guys my entire resume there. I also graduated in Eau Claire. Today we are welcoming slash preparing to learn from Mike Braun of Braun Painting. Mike, how are you feeling today? I'm really, really good. That is awesome. So Braun Painting, I'm going to guess that you paint. That's correct. Awesome. Why don't you tell us what you paint and why you paint it? Uh, we do interior and exterior, commercial and res. Gosh, this sounds like an elevator pitch. <laughs> but it's, it's, I started it's, the precedent. So I'm so silly. sorry. No, that's okay. It's uh, we do inside outside painting, um, commercial, residential, and and a lot of ongoing maintenance painting. Gotcha. Okay, maintenance mm-hmm. painting. What is that now? Uh, commercial spaces, hotels, apartments, things like that, where okay. we've got regularly occurring surfaces that need to get. Repaint it over and over. Gotcha. People punching through the walls or kids' sticky hands kind of stuff? All or? of the above, yep. Okay. Yeah. All right. So I guess speaking of punching through walls, you get into drywall repair and all that jazz? Anything ancillary to getting a finished coat on walls, we do. So if a hole in a wall, a lot of times in condo communities you get you know, a four-foot by four-foot section where the toilet above them leak through. So any, sure. any stuff like that, um, fixing those surfaces, doing the mud work, texturing, all that good business to get to painted, we do. Nice. All mm-hmm. right. And how long have you been in business? About 2007, there was kind of a transition where I was doing this part-time and doing another full-time career. And then by the end of 2007, we were exclusively okay. a painting business. So right in the front of the uh, the When everything was mess. awful, that's when we got yeah. started. You're like, hey, yeah. it's a great time to start a business. Let's do it. Advertising was cheap. Yeah. So what made you decide to get into the painting business versus anything else? Uh, painting is something that I had done in high school. Okay. Um, a friend of mine was working for a painting company and uh, asked his boss, hey, I got another guy. Yeah. So I was in high school getting driven around by my mom, and then eventually I got my license, and I was showing up painting for, I think it was 6 or $7 an hour cash. Oh, nice. And uh, <laughs> did that every summer, and into college did some stuff for landlords, things like that. And okay. I guess the framing is, it, it, even in, you know, 7th, 8th grade, I was in the neighborhoods putting flyers up, like, I'll move your rocks, I'll mow your lawn, I'll sure. paint stuff. And the first time I ever painted was someone whose lawn I was mowing, he said, you know how to paint? And I said, yep. And I'd never done it before, but sure. worked my way through that. And so I've always kind of been that type. That's awesome. Yeah. We don't see kids like that anymore. No. Well, maybe. I don't know. Hopefully so. No, at least not in my neighborhood. In my neighborhood, I'm surprised now that school starting there's kids at the bus stop yeah because otherwise you just do not see them they're hiding inside their house or at their friend's house or something like that they're not outside playing or mowing lawns or anything like that you have the kids out on the street riding their bikes and when it gets dark come home it's yeah maybe not that's so rare anymore that's rare yeah. i don't know maybe just too many white vans rolling around or something Could be. Like who that. knows who knows or ipads could be. There's that too, right? A lot of tablets inside Digital the house. Age, yeah. yeah. That's too bad. Because then you wonder, are those kids ever going to really start their business? If they've never had to actually sell or go door to door or anything well, like that? I think at the very minimum, they have a tough time looking people in the eye and having a conversation. That's totally fair. Extremely fair. Yeah. 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 Which Ooh. is unfortunate. <laughs> it is. Yeah. The good news is they can work for people like us. So it's presumably, maybe, yeah. that's, a, maybe that's a bigger presumption than maybe. I can really Who take knows? on. So, speaking of employees, though, do you have employees? We have, so we're a family business. We okay. currently have, we're a staff of 26. Oh, wow. Okay, mm-hmm. it's your healthy size business. Yeah. All right. Yeah, yeah. So, since 2007, was it pretty steady growth, or was there a big bump, or? So, the deal was when, uh, going back to 07, I was I was doing a sales job. Sure. And kind of doing painting on the side, and when we decided to go full on with the family painting business, Mm -hmm. um, I basically said to my wife, I don't want to be, you know, 60 years old and still wielding a brush. Sure. So I started as what I refer to as kind of a chuck in a truck. And I don't mean it derogatory, but there's a lot of painters out there that are painters that it's them in a truck and maybe someone who helps them and that's their business and they like that and they have full control and that's great. Mm -hmm. Um, Right out of the gates, our goal was I will probably paint by myself for two to three years, Mm -hmm. start to build a little bit of a base, start to build some customers. 
and then we will hire on people. Sure. And within the second year or so, I had a couple of people, and mm-hmm. we kind of struggled our way through what it meant to have employees sure. and how to set that all up and how to have that functionally work and and sort of build a good foundation for being able to build a business as we sure. go. But the whole goal was to have a, a family-owned business where my wife could be home with the kids mm-hmm. um, because that was that was our goal. Mm-hmm. And we got there kind of within a couple, two, three years. Now, it wasn't awesome. pretty and it didn't go really sure. smooth and we didn't know what we were doing, but we were right. there. And then we kind of had to reassess and say, what do we want to do? But it was easily within a year and a half or so, we already had employees and we were kind of ahead of where we thought we were going Very to be. cool. Yeah. So did you ever have business before where you had employees or were you ever managing employees or something of that nature? No, but out of college, I was kind of like a sales and marketing consultant okay. for a company. And really, they just had me as a as a, a, a subcontractor, but I was an employee there. Gotcha. Okay. Um, and then I worked for a company in Atlanta, Tulsa-based Quick Trip Corporation. Okay. And that's kind of where I learned how to manage people. That's mm-hmm. the reason I bring this up. So sure. I had worked my way from, you know, a clerk to managing a store mm-hmm. in the Atlanta division, and I was like the second fastest oh, to nice. get to that spot. Okay. But all of the management tools I've picked up when it comes to training and discipline and running people from establishing competency to issues with commitment and dismissals and things like that. Sure. That was a fabulous company to experience all that stuff with. Nice. And they, let, okay. they let you make a lot of mistakes and then move to the next and move to the next. And you'd get new faces every time to sure. make new mistakes. Um, so that's where I kind of learned to manage people. So it was really, really helpful. That's hugely helpful. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I wish I had that before I started my business. It was fantastic. Sure. Uh, it, it, wasn't a, it wasn't a cure-all, but it helped me learn how to manage people for sure. No, and, there's definitely something to be said for yeah. experience, right? Mm-hmm. That's not necessarily something you can learn in a classroom. Right. And it was, it was free. For sure. Me. So That's awesome. That's cool. You actually got paid for it, right? Exactly right. That's yeah. very cool. It was neat. So when you started your painting business, was the intention to start a business and painting just happened to be something that you said, hey, I've done this before. Let's make some money at that. Painting was the thing that I knew. Okay. And in 07, case in point, I was in a, I was in a business in partnership with my brother. Okay. <clears throat> and we were developing some real estate in the Milwaukee area. Okay. And all of the financial stuff that happened affected that. Mm. Where we had we'd gone from life is really good and I'm in my, you know, mid late twenties and sure. look at what we've achieved to right. gosh, what are we gonna do for cash flow? Ah. And so I took this job doing sales, which was by all measures a fabulous job. Mm-hmm. Three, four months in, I'm still doing painting jobs on the side on the weekend because okay. I'd started that momentum. Sure. But this felt safe and secure, and it had a 401k, and I had a computer sure. and a car, and yep. and my my boss was patting me on the shoulder, saying, "You're you're crushing it. You're doing better than the person that was here for six months. Mm-hmm. You have a real future here." Mm-hmm. And I went, "I'm miserable, and I don't like this. I'm out of here. <laughs> so long. And I'm gonna go start a painting business." And sure. He said, "You're absolutely crazy, but good luck." All right. So that was it, and then we started the business out of necessity. Sure. And it was every job I could get, I'll get. And I remember I needed three thousand five hundred and some odd dollars and I needed it in three and a half weeks and okay. I went to Craigslist and I got a stranger to give me that money to paint and it's just been that way ever since nice so 3500 for mortgage or whatever mortgage expenses all that different kind of stuff okay yep. sure mm-hmm. nice so you started from essentially from the ground up yeah had the equipment and stuff like that had the know-how well the really cool thing for me at the time was you need a brush and a roller and a step ladder and sure. there's very very minimal barrier to entry for creating a sure what we'll call and i'm doing air quotes a a painting company sure Um, which is why there's probably quite a few of them right but i would argue there's a big difference between a an organization and a a painter i would support that argument (laughs) and there's a lot of a lot of different metrics and variables involved in whether you're running a business or you're actually kind of working to pay yourself sure totally i talk about that in the bold business book about the being a an owner of a company right versus just being Self-employed, mm-hmm. right? You own your job, which right. is probably got terrible pay with it. <laughs> right. No benefits and insurance or something you right. hope your exactly spouse brings right. you. Yep. Yep. yep, yep, That's crazy. So then tell me about uh, your first hires. When you decided, at what point did you decide, hey, it's time to bring on some people? Um, the first time I decided it was time to bring on people, that was really, really hard. Mm-hmm. Um, I did what had worked for me in the past, which I'm just going to say right now I would never do again. Okay. <laughs> um, but I kind of put an ad out there on Craigslist and sure. said, I'm looking for painters. And of course, at That's that right. time, yeah. and I didn't even have the, the, I didn't understand how bad the market was. Sure. But at that time, 
I don't um, think a lot of people did that. Right. Then, right? right. We can say, oh yeah, look at that now, yeah. but back then. Exactly. No. So I'm 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 getting some a few jobs, piecing them together. Things are, I'm starting to get some momentum, creating a couple relationships that have, that were really integral in our early growth. Mm-hmm. And I went to Craigslist, and in in '07, when you put a Craigslist ad out, said I'm looking for someone who knows how to paint. You get like 25 people would respond. Sure. So I talked to one or two of them because I needed somebody starting tomorrow, mm-hmm. and that's kind of how it how it started at first. And, nice. And with one or two employees, there's a lot of liberties with how you can treat people. There's just a lot more life, sure. head trash that you get to know about these people, and sure. you're kind of serving them as much as having them help you absolutely because you want them to be stable and helpful in, in mm-hmm. your vision and our practices are a lot different now but that's sure. kind of how it started well you lose one employee when you only have one or two and all of a sudden that's either 50 percent or 33 percent of your yeah. entire workforce exactly right and i didn't even look at it that way then i just knew i had a certain amount of work to get done and i wanted to get it done sure but i had a i had a a, a great person that had a lot of experience. Mm-hmm. I ended up hiring his son. I ended up hiring his daughter. Oh, wow. Um, they worked together kind of as a family on okay. different job sites for a while. He transitioned off to something that was better for him, and that's great. Sure. Um, yeah, and then we just kind of learned how to have a little bit better hiring practices. That's awesome. So then over the course of time, then I imagine you get big enough where you have to deal start dealing with more of a, a business where it's not so much you guys rubbing shoulders with each other. Right. That you get a volume of people where you just can't. It's well, no longer a family, it's a team kind of thing. Exactly right. We have, we still are a family. Sure. And we still, um, we're a really good, diverse family of people. Um, we work as teams, but we do as our culture. We refer to ourselves as family. Okay. But within that, there are has to be expectations in, you know, when you have 16, 18, 19 people out in the field. Right. You can't have one person consistently chronically showing up late and then no. terminate someone else for being late. It's about right. you have to have some HR practices now mm-hmm. and you need to walk along and identify things when they come up that could become a thing in the future. Sure. And we want to start that dialogue so that we can shape that behavior mm-hmm. and get it to where it needs to be. Sure. So you you can't do this he said, she said with employees and then go no. create some kind of consequence. It's about being very consistent and mm-hmm. all the legal issues with wrongful terminations, things like that. It just gets a lot more involved and you need to be aware of sure how to approach all that stuff sure so most of that did you learn or did you have employee manuals and stuff like that from the start where you knew what to do i have um i've always thought that if you find somebody that's already done what you're trying to do Mm -hmm. they can expedite your learning curve big time huge and i've got just a tremendous amount of really good friends Mm -hmm. um one of which was a labor law attorney okay i can ask kind of advice or what sure. do you think about this mm-hmm. um, as well as us just doing research mm-hmm. and my wife does um, a little bit of stuff it, we, we were so typical it was my wife does the books sure you know i go we out never and do hear the work. that right ever <laughs> right? never yeah. yeah well just case in point wives don't love doing the books no i don't think no um, my parents got divorced and i think that was right. a good solid yeah at least nozzle in that uh, right hose down right well i mean it's she, she does a little bit of stuff, and her background is, is public work relations with some really fabulous mm. companies. So her ability to communicate and, and come up with ideas about how we present ourselves in the marketplace in a consistent way, and she's really, really smart about that and, sure. a, and a really good communicator. But she does do some stuff that I'll say is well below her pay grade Okay. Um, at the moment, and that'll probably change as the business continues sure. to scale. Sure. Um, but she's involved in some of that stuff and mm-hmm. has done a little bit of the research in the HR, so she kind of performs that function. Someone does all of our payroll and all that stuff, but we still do the research when we have a circumstance that may come up that, that we need to do our research and proceed in a certain way. Sure, sure. That makes yeah. sense. What have been some of the challenges that you've dealt with that you maybe didn't foresee coming in regards to employees specifically? Um, has it been the typical stuff like no call, no show kind of stuff, or is it anything you know, worse than that i feel like as an employer in our industry and i don't mean this to sound derogatory in any way because mm-hmm. all of our painters are f- wonderful professionals mm-hmm. they're all in process improving every single day and we try to paint a vision of this trade that and i don't want to digress but we paint a vision of this trade that we are trying to stand like a light that does it different sure. and set apart so if you create a vertical column of the biggest companies that come to your mind on mm-hmm. you know radio or media and then the the owner operator at the bottom mm-hmm. we've always wondered where we are in the middle sure. and now the way we put it is we're off to the side completely set apart and different uh-huh. that's who okay. we are and that's how we want to be sure um that being said 
our industry has a has a reputation like a lot of trades do mm -hmm. that, that the no call no shows and the discipline and training and mm -hmm. and the the head trash that people might bring or the drama that people bring to the job you, of course you have some of that and you have mm -hmm. to deal with it um some of those challenges again yeah tardiness absenteeism our sure. their ability to show up for our customers who need to show up for their work and right. their boss and make arrangements for their kids and so mm -hmm. all of these things are a customer service issue that we're kind of really really clear up front that if if it's the type of thing where you might come in some days you might not come in other days things like that it's just not going to work so right. we try to present a culture of quality and who we are and mm -hmm. people tend to say this is exactly what I've been looking for. I'm in. Sure. This feels really good. And mm -hmm. this is more organized than where I was. Mm -hmm. Or they go, I am not going to get up to that bar to step over it. I'm going. Sure. And so it actually is really you helpful if you can up? present. <laughs> right. If you can present who you are, um, it's really, really helpful for people to decide that's not me. I'm out of here. Sure. And then you don't have somebody for three, four months that just slowly kind of tapers off. And then you have issues. Gotcha. They think you're just another painting company or something exactly like that. Right. And they can get away with this other stuff before. Right. They're just job hopping or something yep. like that. So you'll have somebody who comes in and they'll they'll be, you know, oh, something shiny over here. I've been here a month, but there's another dollar an hour over there. Right. Our our sort of what we what we drip on people and what our what our message is is plant some roots. Mm -hmm. We will pour into you the skills, the training, all that. And then be here a while, and then you can really, really have a good career out of this. Sure. And so some of that, I am not a life coach, but right. some of that is coaching those employees, those part-time employees or the full-time mm -hmm. employees who have been thrown around just chasing $12 an hour for mm -hmm. years to mm -hmm. say, it doesn't have to be that way for you. That doesn't have to be your story. There's this area here where you can grow and flourish and actually be proud of who you are, not mm -hmm. just be making money, right. but be part of an organization that will lift you up and actually allow you to flourish in a way that you've probably not envisioned for yourself as a quote unquote painter. Right, 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 right. I talked to so my crew about that in, uh, well, I guess even, especially in the interview when we're interviewing people, mm -hmm. this is your last job when you're on your way to work, whether you took a bus or drove there or bike there, were you feeling like this is a good thing that I'm on my way to, or are you looking like, Oh, the next eight hours are just going to be right. not so fun. Yeah. And we're trying to do everything we can with our business to make it, let it, it is an enjoyable piece. Yeah. It's not going to be sitting on a beach and, Whatever, Florida or no, something but you like even that, get sick of that after a week reading a book. I could get sick of that in five minutes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's just the uh, the nature. I guess some people have this. I shouldn't say some people. It's kind of society as a whole mm -hmm. has this whole work equals bad, mm -hmm. everything else is good, and that's not always the case. Right. So I mean, if you do what you can to make it a nice work environment as mm -hmm. best you can, people should stay if they understand what you're trying to do. Right. At, at, at the end of the day, I mean, we're painting and there are days that are tough and there are, sure. there are clients and customers who sometimes can be challenging, mm -hmm. but that's an opportunity for them to grow in how they interact with people. It's not, I don't know, I, you know, I walk into the paint store sometimes and you see other, other painters walk into there and sure. it's like, that's their 10 minutes to get out of the war zone Sure. that they are begrudgingly submitting to. Mm -hmm. They're picking up a gallon of paint and now it's like they're going back to the war, oh, like just, like just a misery, you know, sure. and our people come in and they're happy to be there. And mm -hmm. like I said, we just, we, the way we do it, we try to be set apart and do mm -hmm. it different. So why don't you tell us about that a little bit? When you set off to the side, what differentiates you? So our, you talking like mission and vision? Yeah, sure. You tell okay. me, I guess when, when you're not in that vertical, you're off to the side, yeah. I guess define that for me. So what, what we've kind of come to realize at the size that we are and we're mm -hmm. sort of on a, on a momentum path to, to get bigger but sure. you know the table stakes is the quality paint job mm -hmm. and, and we already I know that we already do very very good work okay um, it's the extra 5% that a lot of our clients really ap appreciate and okay. it might be 80% of people look at the average paint job and go okay that was red it's blue now the lines are pretty clean sure good. All right. The type of clientele that we service a lot, they that extra 5% is important mm -hmm. and they will pay for it and mm -hmm. not very many people can get it there. Sure. And so we can. So okay. on the quality side, quality is table stakes. We do high quality work, but we still know that 50% of that experience is not the paint job. It's who was in my house, how did I dialogue with them, how did it feel, mm -hmm. did I feel like these three people that were in my home were having a good time and enjoyed themselves and mm -hmm. was the air light mm -hmm. or were these two people at odds with each other and there was a funk in the air and it was sure. uncomfortable and awkward for me as the homeowner mm -hmm. i mean to let us into your home is like the most intimate place 
huge your, trust issue. Your kids' bedrooms. You're having right. a baby, and you're now painting this brand new room that is part of a story mm-hmm. that clients and customers are telling themselves about the life that they're realizing for themselves. Right. 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 And we are part of that. Mm-hmm. So painting the walls from blue to red is great, but to somehow have that whole process feel fantastic from mm-hmm. beginning to end, from mm-hmm. initial appointment to when I got the invoice, was everything correct? Right. Did I have to go back and forth with someone mm-hmm. 10 times because there was a $20 issue? Mm-hmm. Now this thing that was fabulous for 99.9% of the experience, mm-hmm. I'm remembering that last two days where right. they just couldn't get the billing right and oh my gosh, this company. Mm-hmm. So it's about the entire process from beginning to end and the experience of everyone you experience from your initial mm-hmm. appointment to who re- who receives, you know, who you dialogue with uh, when you talk with us to set up an appointment to getting a bill that's super easy to pay right online and having mm-hmm. the whole process be easy. Yeah, that's incredible. Yeah. That's uh, it essentially sounds, without sounding too complimentary, uh, it sounds like you're kind of a unicorn in the construction industry. I deal with a lot of people in the construction industry. I used to drive a concrete truck way back okay. when, so I dealt with them. And just the, the mindset that a lot of construction companies have, whether they're owners or employees, yeah. was uh, there's a funk in the air, man. Yeah. People were just not happy, especially mm-hmm. concrete people. Right. I get that because it's heavy and it's annoying. Yeah, and, and tight schedules. Yeah, and they were just, when someone would call them and leave a message, I'm not calling them back because I'm busy kind of thing. Or they'd answer their phone saying, hey... Right. Right. Like, how'd you get this number kind of thing? Right. Exactly. Yep. The employees were crabby. They're showing up and beat up rusty trucks. Mm -hmm. Like they didn't care about their business. Right. Like if you're just going to treat it like that, just be an employee for someone else. Yeah. Why would you work so hard to be annoying? Yeah. Right. So it's frustrating. So it's good to hear you that you, that you're taking that customer service aspect, which from my point of view is probably 80% of the job. Mm -hmm. Because realistically, most people could probably paint their own wall. If they're like me, they do a bad job. Right, at least wherever corners meet. Right. I can paint right. the center section just yeah. beautifully, right? So what, what we say is anyone can roll a wall, but a paint job's only as good as the edges. Yeah, that's it. That's it, right? Yeah. You can totally tell when someone mm-hmm. like me has been in there. We don't judge, though. We're just here to, here to help. That's, <laughs> that's, that's true. That's what, I, that's what I tell people. That's why my wife and I, that's why we hire pros, because yeah. I'm like, no, 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 no. I'm not mm-hmm. getting in there. I've seen, uh, I've seen painters do amazing things where I would be trying to use frog tape or blue mm-hmm. tape or something like that. Yep. Still end up with a mess. They're doing it by hand about 20 times as fast as I did the wall. Right. And like, how did you get the line so straight? And why mm-hmm. aren't you pinstriping cars or something? Because we do it every day. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. So that's, that's great to hear. And then that gives some buy-in from your employees as well because they can see what the standard is. Right. It's, um... I'll, I'll say this much. We we have a process, and I think our process is probably, if you compare us to the rest of our industry, which is albeit extremely fragmented, like I said, sure. from big companies to owner-operators mm-hmm. that are just trying to keep up with a text conversation here right. and an email string here and mm-hmm. a phone call here. I mean, just like where all that info lands and how they organize that. Uh, a I've lot of cracks and stuff is falling through. beyond me. Yep. Yeah. If, if I still try to do it that way where it was me and, you know, 15 painters, mm-hmm. I've, I just, I think I'd have had a stroke by now. Oh, I bet. I bet. Yeah. But but it's not we're not perfect. Sure. But but we're you know, as long as we're happiness is an improvement, right? So as long as we're improving, we're going mm-hmm. the right direction and we're trending up into the right. So right. W- new mistakes are okay. Sure. And um try to try to learn from the ones that we've already made. No, to say that there's not gonna be any mistakes at all is mm-hmm. not realistic at all and perfection would be great, but in the right. end you're dealing with humans. Exactly right. So that's stuff you can't control and stuff you can't. So right. that's totally understandable. Yep. But the fact that you're just aware of it mm-hmm. and that you got systems in place to make sure it happens as best you can. Right. That I mean, you're probably better than ninety nine percent of your competitors. Well, f- for the experience piece, you have projects that are completely dependent on something that nobody can tr- can control. Mm-hmm. For example, all the rain we've been having. Yeah. You could have a queue of exterior jobs. You mm-hmm. could have it pipelined. You can be accounting for 7% of attendance to slide on either being late sure. or or sick or my child is sick. And there's mm-hmm. just life happening with the, with the human beings that are doing the work for us. Mm-hmm. And that's all okay. But to be able to plan for that and be in a situation where people are being heard from, mm-hmm. if you give somebody a reason to understand, mm-hmm. most will understand. Sure. I don't know if you noticed, but it's been raining for three days. So we lost 400 hours of productivity over the past three days, so we're going to be starting your job about five days late. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, 
that actually makes sense. And I know you can't paint in the rain. So right. and I know there were people before me. Mm-hmm. So, you know, the lion's share of people, if you give them a reason. But again, it's all right. part of the process flow, being in touch and constantly instead of somebody saying, hey, what's going on? Hey, what's going on? We're sure. saying you may or may not have noticed, but here's what's going on and preempting that communication line and having people. That's really the thing. Know. As long as you have communication, right? Correct. So as long as you're letting the customer know. Yep. Which that, again, you're ahead of 99% of them. It's gold as long as they know where they stand. Mm-hmm. And if it's like I tell my scheduling coordinator, I say, we people are not unreasonable. Mm-hmm. We're not consistent. Right. Sure. So and I think that's um, that that's it. Mm-hmm. And I know that you and you know, I have to give credit where credit is due because that's not my own uh, phrase. But I know you've interviewed AJ Sue on here before. And that was I did, one of, yeah, a month ago, yeah. something like that. Yeah, yeah. So that was that we do coaching with him. And that was one oh, of nice. his major. Mm-hmm. Um, that was kind of a, a message probably several years back that we sure. that he had brought up and mentioned. And I've kind of taken that and run with it because it actually works. So sure. people aren't fickle. We're just inconsistent. If someone mm-hmm. says, I don't understand, it means we haven't been clear. Mm hmm. And even though that's not fair 100% of the time, it's a good metric to stick with. Absolutely. Yeah, we, uh, with Calls on Call, we run into mm-hmm. communication challenges, we'll call sure. it. Sure, yep. Where it may not be our fault, mm-hmm. but I would say a lot of the times we end just taking the fall yeah. for it because it's not worth going down whose fault is this kind of right. thing. No good can come from that. That never goes well. So just like, yeah, totally yep. us. Mm-hmm. Totally us. We'll yep. suck this up, move on, fix it, and right. go about our business, I yep. guess, so... Unless somebody leaves a bad review for a mistake that they made, then it's frustrating. Oh, my <laughs> gosh. That, that whole thing, too. I mean, that, I've experienced that kind of stuff, too. But by and large, our, well, I would say at this at this point, our reputation in media and stuff is really, really good. Yeah, that's awesome. But it is, it's, you know, you have, as a contractor, mm-hmm. you can sit and say it's pretty unfair for someone to have a completely anonymous. Mm-hmm. And I don't want to sound sour about this. So this is all. No, it's a safe place. You but can totally sound sour. For somebody to have a complete anonymous soapbox on which mm-hmm. to be able to say whatever they want. Right. With no repercussions whatsoever. Mm-hmm. Feels a little bit unfair if there's information that they're lacking mm-hmm. to actually understand why something is or isn't the way that it is. Right. Yeah, totally agree. Totally agree. We've looked at reviews to try to hunt down people for calls on call. Really? People, well, because <laughs> sometimes people will leave a review that said they never called back. Right. So they'll leave a one-star review when they ever ne- they never actually did any business with right. them. But then on the flip side, the business never gave them a chance to do business. <laughs> right. The person tried to reach out. You'd think there'd be more leverage on the on the, the work that's completed versus the experience of work was never even done. That's the thing, though, right? When people are happy, they kind of expect that. Mm-hmm. But when they're upset, then they feel like the whole world should know that you messed up, right? Right. right. So, yeah, it, it's a very large soapbox. Mm-hmm. Disproportional. Yeah. yeah. So I don't know how to fix that. This, for me, it's because there's one bad review. And, and I remember it's on Yelp. And it says, can you give a negative review? never even showed up for the appointment okay okay so I, this, I'll, I'll make the story fast sure this was like a year or two years into my business okay and the the potential client was in lodi okay and my son we needed to take him to the er to get an epineb because he he had croup and uh-huh. he was our firstborn okay he was really young sure and when your son's going mm-hmm. to breathe it turns out he's at 99.99% oxygen, but for a new parent, sure, this is this makes you panic. Yep. So we're in there. I missed the appointment. I wasn't. I didn't call her. Okay, fairness. Sure. I'm on my way to the ER with my son. Mm-hmm. I didn't call her and say, "Hey, I'm going to be late for our appointment, or can we reschedule?" Mm-hmm. But I went to the appointment. Mm-hmm. 25 minutes after I was supposed to be there at the appointment, she had already left that Yelp review. Wow. As I'm walking out of the ER, I shoot a note. Sure. Hey, sorry, this is what happened. Crickets, no response. Sure. And that review's already up there. Wow. So then I send another note. Oh, my gosh, I saw your your Yelp review. Right. This is the story. This is what happened. I'm right. more than happy to set something up. Crickets. That, to me, isn't fair. Okay. Because you know they didn't I mean? give you the opportunity to make it right. Well, not only that, but I would feel like a visit to the ER is extenuating circumstances sure. enough to have a little bit of grace right. in saying, mm-hmm. okay, maybe I can give him another try. Right. That's fair. But whatever. We are, you know, we have good reviews on Yelp and stuff like that sure. now. So, and, and that's okay. She, you know. And it, now if something like that were to happen again, hopefully it doesn't, but just in case, you have enough employees and all that kind of stuff where it's not an issue. Right. Which is another argument for having a, owning a business versus owning a yeah. job. 
Because owning yeah. a job, you'd be running that for the next 30 years. Yeah. And Having f- struggles like that. Yeah. And fair enough, fair enough to me to learn that lesson, mm-hmm. to say when stuff comes up, you have to just really make sure. And that goes for appointments, too. If mm-hmm. my rule is if I'm more than single digits late, mm-hmm. I'm calling them to let them know, hey, I'm running a couple minutes late. I really apologize and don't want to disrespect your time in any way. Mm-hmm. I'm going to be there at such and such and I'm on my way. Sure. If that disrupts your schedule and you want to reschedule, mm-hmm. we can do that now. Otherwise, I'll see you in a few minutes. Sure. And that goes great every time mm-hmm. because you're just saying, here's kind of what's going on. Right. And nine out of 10 times, I'm right on time or early anyway. Yeah. But the, the stuff comes up. You have yep. a, a day full of appointments and mm-hmm. someone really wants to chat and you right. don't want to be rude or, you know, people have stuff going on in their lives. And sometimes it's hard to say okay, well, this was really nice. I'm going to, I'm going to go now. Right. You know, when they're telling you kind of like their life story or they're helping paint a vision of the part of the story that you're participating in Mm -hmm. their life. Like that's authentic stuff and we need to be authentic back. Right. And that's kind of what I enjoy most about what I do now because I'm not painting. I just feel like I'm building community every single day. Sure. Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Right, right, right. You have to. It's awesome. Right. And it's really, really rewarding. Mm Mm-hmm. That's the cost of interruption, right? Nobody yeah. pops in your office and says, hey, how much time do you have for me to tell you the story? <laughs> right, exactly. I exactly. got two minutes, 30 seconds, go. Right. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, some some appointments, I I learn somebody's story. I pet their dog. We mm-hmm. talk about almost everything but paint. Paint's mm-hmm. the last thing, the last five minutes, but that's all it takes. Sure. Well, the assumption is that you know what you're doing and they just need to pick a color, right? So If I can establish that I'm their expert and they can trust me to be that way, it eliminates a lot of the details. Mm-hmm. And, and it's really just about... Are we clicking and do we have trust and are you feeling good about this potential relationship or mm-hmm. not? And that's, they establish that and I establish that. Sure. That's awesome. Yeah. So let's shift into marketing a little bit if mm-hmm. you don't mind. Sure. 2007, you start going, it's you. Now we're 2018, so 11 years later. Yeah. You got 26 employees, is that yep. what you said? Including managers and scheduling coordinator. Sure. And, okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you've grown, mm-hmm. <laughs> as it's safe yeah. to say. Yeah. So what was the secret sauce in regards to marketing and all that jazz? This was all word of mouth. Okay. All word of mouth. Mm -hmm. Entirely. Yep. Wow. Every now and again, we would do like, uh, you have the Sun Prairie football schedule and you've got sponsors on the side of it in your studio here. Mm -hmm. We would do stuff like that. There's no way to measure whether that works. No. We would do stuff like that. Um, We're more participatory and community stuff than paying for advertising okay community stuff Uh, give me an example so um we've sponsored different things like a golf outing for a friend of mine for um sturt his son's got sturge weber disease so he has a golf outing every year um and we part you know we'd we'd sponsor a hole there sure um we do a lot of silent auction items okay um my wife is involved in junior league of madison sure and so this is a women's community that goes out and just does all kinds of fabulous things in the community and so Mm -hmm. a lot of the things that they support financially we would contribute silent auction items things like that like two free rooms labor and paint included by brawn painting here okay that kind of thing okay um so we've done we've done a lot of that kind of stuff Mm -hmm. a little bit of facebook presence we have a page we have a website We've, I think a lot of our success was early on, 07, okay. 08, 09, was mm-hmm. having some pretty good, um, some pretty good SEO. Okay. Like really findable. Sure. Um, but in terms of spending advertising dollars, mm-hmm. um, not much on the advertising side. Gotcha. In terms okay. of marketing and reach, like just a lot of word of mouth stuff. Sure. And some community participation stuff. Okay. And some relationships that were really, really fortunate that mm-hmm. were just dumb luck. Okay. Mm-hmm. Relationships where people were, wasn't just a house and once every five years they get it painted or something right. like that. Relationships or... that led us to some bigger commercial companies that we've okay. continued to do work for. And that, even that was, we do a lot of work for um, a couple of the bigger kind of builders mm-hmm. in, in Madison that are doing these high rises and stuff like that. And mm-hmm. some of that was through, we did some free painting for, for Goodwill. Okay. Um, if you want to hear a silly story, you asked about when we first started sure. hiring. Yeah. I had two painters ever and someone from Goodwill called me and said, we have a recovery house that we really want to get painted. Um, this probably doesn't feel like the coolest thing to you. I'm wondering if you can donate the paint and the mm-hmm. time. It would be all free, but I'm happy to put your logo on our website. Sure. And I thought to myself, absolutely no way. All right. This is, this is awful. Because the but, cost and the time and the opportunity I, cost. Right, sure. right, right, right. And I was really kind of young and immature. Mm-hmm. Um, and we were starting to get work and be busy, but I, but I said, you know what, I'll tell you what, I've got three people 
that I potentially want to hire. Mm -hmm. And I think I need two people. Ah. These people, I don't know what their experience is. And he said, we don't need, we just really need the help. We're sure. More, we're more concerned about the help and getting this brightened up for the people that are here. Right. And I said, if you let me bring these three people, mm -hmm. I will pay them. And mm -hmm. it'll be kind of a trial for them. But I just want to be really up, up, like open book about this. Right. They're not necessarily employees, but I want to... Sure. I want to help you, and then you mm -hmm. can help me in this way. I can see which skills they have. and so on the get job to know interview. Them. Right. So we painted for two days, and I hired uh, two of them. Okay. And one of the guys even said, hey, I'll come back tomorrow, and I want to volunteer my time, because he was kind of like into oh, nice. helping this sure. organization. So then I get a call from a big construction company. I don't know if I can say their name or not. Sure. So like Stevens Construction Company, I get a call from them, and they said, you did some work at Goodwill. Mm -hmm. We're doing a new seven-unit building for Goodwill. Um, the folks at Goodwill organization said that you had done some work for them. So they wanted me to include you on the bidders list. Are you interested okay. in that? And I said, yes, I'm interested. Sure. In that. So just little things like that mm -hmm. have allowed us to start to participate and, and do relationship with those, those bigger, sure. you know, building relationships, nice. commercial okay. projects, things like that. In town. Okay. So that, that way you're not relying on the, the individual households. Not that those aren't desired, but you're, the referrals that you're getting are people that can use you routinely. Yeah. So, the, I mean, I think that especially now, you know, mm -hmm. everyone's talking about who knows where the market's going. Sure. And when's the crash well, so coming? So far, it's doing okay. <laughs> right. I know. And how even today it is. And yeah. housing and all this stuff, like when's this bubble going to burst? And, mm -hmm. and I think it's really important to go, we're over here doing commercial high rises mm -hmm. and we're doing production painting mm -hmm. and we're over here painting trim and kitchen cabinets mm -hmm. and painting two bathrooms and a bedroom. Mm -hmm. And we're, we're staying really diversified in that, right. you know, not all the eggs are in one basket. And mm -hmm. while I can make hay while the sun's shining here, mm -hmm. this is a cycle that mm -hmm. we can participate in, benefit from. And then when it comes around in eight more years, we can do it again. But right. it's here now, mm -hmm. but I'm not putting everything in that basket. Right. Totally, totally understand. Yeah. That's smart. Yeah. yeah it's, it's so interesting to compare you to some of the other painter people that I Is know. Is that right? Uh, that have been in business for decades, and they're essentially still them and their rusty truck. The thing, too, though, is that that, I think, is a, a choice. I think some people... Must be on some level. If you, if you ask, there are, some, there are probably two or three other painters in Madison whom I deeply respect are industry peers, and I would have them in my own home to paint. Mm -hmm. Probably three. Okay. Um, That's not many. No. <laughs> compared to how no. many painters there are. It's not. And I'm sure that I'm completely unaware of the amount of painting companies there actually are. Sure. I can know. tell you from research for calls on call with us trying to target them, there's a ton. Mm -hmm. And oddly enough, a great majority of them don't even have a web presence. Right. And that might be fine for them. Sure. Well, clearly, well, I don't even know clearly. It's working on some level. Well, I can tell you what, that the market's great right now. And if you're a painting company, mm -hmm. you should be flush with good work. Totally. And it's not going to stay that way. Yeah, absolutely. Right. The problem right now and is so, people finding employees, right. but that will not be a forever thing. Additionally, if you're, if you're sitting here saying, I got this all figured out, the reason is because there's people knocking on your door left and right right now. Yep. Because a lot of people don't have the availability or mm -hmm. at least have the maturity or the knowledge that they can't take on another job. Right. Unless they say yes to everybody, that's mm -hmm. a whole different set of problems. Mm -hmm. You'll end up making everyone mad by trying <laughs> to please everybody. Right. Um, but, you know, I, it's, it's, a, it's a good market right now. But I, back Great to market. the choice piece. Yeah. If, if you're the type that just you're an artisan and you want to do the work and you want to be at every job and, mm -hmm. and all that, that's absolutely great. And sure. I think that's a choice for some people that they they don't have the ability or the interest in managing others, which can be very frustrating. Totally fair. I get, on that level, I get it. Yep. Because I, I can understand uh, there's essentially three headaches in yep. business, right? Regardless yep. of what business you have. Yep. And employees are probably two of those. Yeah. To me, I think having employees is can be the most rewarding, most fruitful thing Absolutely. And it can also be the most stressful, most mm -hmm. frustrating thing. Yeah, totally agree. But getting back to your point about smaller versus bigger companies, mm -hmm. I was just really lucky to have a marketing and a business admin degree. I have a business admin minor, but a marketing degree. Nice. And um, so I have a little bit of a piece of understanding how business works. Sure. And I think a lot of people 
and this goes for any trade, not just painters. Mm -hmm. But you have a person who's a fantastic painter. You mm -hmm. have a person who's a fantastic carpenter, a really good plumber. Mm -hmm. They do the thing really well. Mm -hmm. They might not know process well. They sure. might not be good at bidding and invoicing and managing work comp premiums when you start hiring people. They're probably terrible at that. So what I think happens to a lot of people is they start a business. They do the thing very well. They start to have more people that call them to do mm -hmm. that thing for them very well for money. Mm -hmm. And then they don't know how to deal with it all because they right. are not a business person. Right. They are a painter or right. a carpenter or Absolutely. a trades person. Yes. It's plateau because their capacity is reached. Right. You just and they don't know how to go above that. You just get to a diminishing return where you just go, ah, I'm getting calls and I'm supposed to do an invoice, but I have to be painting right now because mm -hmm. I need this done by tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And I was absolutely there. It's sure. like you can't, you can't be doing the planning and, and growing the relationship and doing the thing at the same time. Right. You just, you, you can't. Mm -hmm. I, I definitely tried. <laughs> no, <laughs> I, I was there too. It was yeah. a while ago, but and, yeah. And you have to, to some extent, you got to wear all the hats at some point and then to sort of start to shake all that out and figure out how to push right. through that phase where it's really expensive to bring on the extra stuff mm -hmm. to start building that foundation as a springboard for when, what you're planning. Right. A lot of that problem for us was we didn't know what we were planning. Ah, okay. That's fair. You know, like That's it's fair. growing. It's great. It's growing. Sure. It's great. Is that good? Is that not good? I don't know. Right. <laughs> what do we want? There's also, you mentioned the cost, the expense, right? Mm -hmm. Employees cost money. Any other, like an accountant's going to yeah. cost you money. Any outside help at yep. all is going to cost something. Correct. Money, probably some time. Yep. And they're going to ask you to make some decisions, you know, good mm -hmm. or bad or whatever. Like, hey, when do you want to meet for the uh, little tax meeting with your accountant? I don't right. have time for that. Mm-hmm. So there's opportunity costs that you're like, oh, I won't be able to paint then right? because I have to meet with my accountant. Right. So then I'm losing the money. Right? meter's running. Right. Yeah. So I totally understand where people have that, I want to say fallacy, where I have to work as much as possible mm -hmm. so that I can maintain. Right. But realistically, your accountant's probably going to find you two weeks worth of volume in dollars that right. you're going to have to work for. Right. Right. So, yeah, it's so bizarre how many... Um, I don't maybe bizarre is the wrong word. I'll say frustratingly bizarre. I'll sure, say okay. Meeting some companies in just service industries as a whole, well, any mm -hmm. industry as a whole, where they run into that. Mm -hmm. And it's it's just this common pitfall right. that the new entrepreneurs see. And it's weird because people like you and me are more than willing to help meet with mm -hmm. people and just say, hey, this is what's going to happen. Yep. You know, maybe not today, but maybe within a year or something like that, if you actually do grow, that this isn't a secret. Right. It's not like, holy cow, this is the first time that anyone's had a business that mm -hmm. actually used up all their time and they didn't know what to do right. next. What? Yep. Right. Right. <laughs> no one ever saw that coming right. at all. Exactly. <laughs> so, I mean, help is available, but mm -hmm. then it comes down to are you willing to ask for help and are you yep. willing to receive help? Things of that nature. Yep. So, yeah. Interesting conundrum. So Yes, it is. That's awesome. It's never ending. So, I want to talk to you, I guess, um, jumping in the marketing game a little bit. You got the handprint, free logo. You got that That's on true. all your cars and all yes. that kind of stuff. Yep, all consistent. This shirt, the font is a little different. And sure. we did this because um, one of my project managers, Ben, he is, mm -hmm. he's a bit of a designer and, and likes to do computer design and web design, stuff like oh, that. Oh, nice. And uh, so this is, these were like limited edition oh. manager design shirts. Sure. <laughs> so he had a little bit of fun with that, which was cool because yeah. it's another skill of his. And mm -hmm. he can... Um, exercise that you know kind of scratch that itch within the context of the of his job too sure no so how did you decide on that because i know the consistency is fantastic because oh, that's an, i mean from a marketing point of view i mm -hmm. come from a graphic design background it's easy that was the name of the game right right make whatever you're going to make in regards to logo and font and all yep. that jazz but then do it everywhere yeah don't switch it around so the way that this happened is not profound okay it's a it's a simple story Usually but it's isn't. not really <laughs> right. like a it wasn't it wasn't awesome but it People worked put a bunch of crosses in churches and it was just right. two guys nailing some wood together there so you go. there you go well so this first of all my wife and i were sitting down and i had this business going for about two years okay and it had my name and it okay. said brawn interior painting with a phone number okay uh and so that was limited already right? because we do outside work now sure so we were trying to come up with a with a brand and a logo and we had just got a truck and it was like we need to figure this out right and so we knew that a picture of a paint can dripping over the edge or mm -hmm. a paintbrush that had paint dripping over the edge and landing somewhere saying, I am going to make a mess of your home right. was not where we wanted to go with it. Mm -hmm. um, a 
and, it, and that's not to pick on any of the logos, but to me, that just always said dripping, oozing, like I'm right. going to make a mess, you mm -hmm. know? Um, but I'll say Sherwin-Williams logo is the same, and they're one of the most recognizable brands in the world. So It's consistency, so there sure. You go, right? yep. um, so they probably know more than me. But this was fun. It was playful. We mm -hmm. liked the play of the... The royal blue. This is heathered, so it's not technically a bronze painting Pantone blue. Sure. But we liked the orange hand over blue. We mm -hmm. liked the way it looked. We liked the way it stuck out. Mm -hmm. um, and it felt playful. It could have been your hand dipped in paint. Sure. Or it was just kind of like the hand is a really personal thing. Right. And it, but it's but it's fun and playful. Mm -hmm. um, and then we wrote the bronze painting straight over it, and it was originally pink, and then it changed to orange, and okay. that was it. And it cost us, I think, thirty-two bucks on LogoMaker.com. Okay. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay, so that's not like your kid's hand or your hand or your wife's hand. I would hand love to tell you it was my firstborn kid's hand, sure. and that's how it happened. Right and at the moment that he yeah, came out, we exactly. dipped his hand in paint. <laughs> yep, but that's but that's not, uh, that, that would be Sure, dishonest. so that's just, okay, that's yeah. totally fine. However, I think, that and like I've talked with a couple, not to be braggadocious, but I've talked with a couple other people that we've done work for as clients. Mm -hmm. and they're like, just as an FYI, my background's design. I really like your logo. Mm -hmm. It just really works. Mm -hmm. And so I think that instead of taking all the credit for that, I'll say, number one, my wife loved the idea for the hand. Mm -hmm. um, but I think we just lucked into it. Sure. It That's just, all right. We lucked into it, and it's a logo that people really like. Yeah. But it was I, dumb luck. I tell you, it's good. I mean, I like it. I come from a graphic design background. I like it because it's... I wondered, I remember seeing the handprint and I was like, oh, what does that mean? They're messy. But then on the flip side, you're thinking, what if they weren't? Right. Like if, if I ever saw, I, it's funny, side tangent here, right? Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was watching one of those car fix it shows like uh -huh. overhauling or something like that. Yeah. And this mechanic comes from under the car and they're telling you about the transmission they threw in the car. Mm -hmm. This mechanic is spotless. Right. No greasy hands. And I'm like. I was a mechanic for five, six years, whatever. Mm -hmm. And I was like, there's no way that you just put a transmission in that right. car. Right, absolutely not. Because you'd be covered head to toe in grease. Yeah. You'd be swearing. Mm -hmm. And you'd have tools around you. Like, it was just too pristine. Yeah. Right? You never see a doctor come out of surgery with clean hands, right? No. That would be inconsistent <laughs> with your expectations. Yeah, and the re right, right, right. You hope that they're not, right? You probably got blood on your hands somehow if you're digging in my body. Right? So. Right. The assumption that a painter doesn't have paint on them somehow, mm -hmm. I would assume they're doing it wrong. Yeah. I mean, I think you got to wear some to some extent, but that's actually, it's funny you say that because we're trying to work toward not saving money on shirts. Sure. But again, how everything's presented, how clean mm -hmm. could we actually be? No, that's totally true. Because when I was a mechanic, work. yeah, when I was a mechanic, we had these, uh, we're supposed to look like a pit crew. It was yep. Penske way back before they folded. Mm hmm. And they had, it was really nice, red shirts, black pants, and it looked good, but that was the thing, right? Right. Those things show grease. Mm -hmm. When I had the printer repair company, I was making my technicians, I was considering them different levels where they were right. at, and the top ones, I made them wear white shirts. Mm -hmm. So that they didn't, so that when they ended up with the ink on them, yeah. it was kind of like a badge that they had to walk right. around with all day. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So then they, instead of just, oh, it's a black shirt, no big thing, with a white shirt, they actually had to consciously, yeah. it was just clean was in their mentality. Knowing full well that some machines are going to get dirty. But if if you're being mindful of trying to keep yourself clean, mm -hmm. even while you're doing a thing like painting, mm -hmm. wouldn't we be a little more mindful of our process? Absolutely. From the lines to everything. Absolutely. We're just trying to think, not slowing down per se, mm -hmm. but just, aware. just being aware. Mm -hmm. Wait a minute. If I'm caulking a gap on trim and then putting nail holes and then priming and painting it, mm -hmm. do I need to wipe the residual caulk every single time I'm putting a bead on my shirt. Sure. Right. What does that look like? Mm -hmm. Could I hang a rag right here and have a clean shirt? Mm -hmm. So that goes into this piece of not the best because the best to me is a target and it, th it suggests that you figured everything out. Sure. I don't love that because we're mm -hmm. just always improving. Mm -hmm. um, but to be set apart. Right. Oh my gosh. These painters have like hardly any paint on their shirt. Right. But look at them go. I mean, mm -hmm. they're working. Mm hmm. That'd be pretty cool. That'd be fantastic, right? I think it'd be really hard, but it'd Definitely. be really cool. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah, the presentation piece, you guys mm -hmm. take to an awesome level. So yeah. that's awesome. Well done on that. Well, thanks. I do have a couple more questions for you. I know we're running out a little bit of time here. Or a lot of time, really. Um, <laughs> I can't believe it's been that much time already. It goes fast, it doesn't does. it? Yeah. yeah. Something to be said about no commercials. No kidding. <laughs> um, what advice would you give to someone that was considering starting their own business? Their own business of any kind or their own painting any business? Kind. Ah, that's a really good question. I don't mean to 
pause too much. No, make no, sure no, totally. make sure that you really really want to do it. Okay. And and really check yourself to make sure that you have got the grit to grind through the stuff that you don't know, mm -hmm. but that you have certainty that you're going to work through it no matter the problem. Sure. That's awesome. A I lot like of people have really good ideas. Mm -hmm. The ability to say I'm here and I want to get there and I don't know how to do that, that, and that, but I do know how to do that. Sure. To be able to say, this is going to be uncomfortable and I may not love it, but mm -hmm. I'm going to push through that and figure it out. Mm -hmm. Just make sure that you're willing to do that. Interesting. I like that. I like that. I got two things to say on that. Um, one is I had someone tell me that they said, I'm an idea, man. Oh, that's scary. And I'm like, that's worthless. Mm -hmm. Without implementation, you're just a dreamer. Right. So it's funny. And then on the other one, I have a little mantra that's I always win. Mm -hmm. So sometimes when my wife challenges me on that, that's fair, where I don't always yeah. win with her. Right. <laughs> but generally speaking, in everywhere else, as long as you have that mindset right. that you're going to win, you do. Yeah. And to your point, too, I think that the process is more a determinant of success than potentially the idea in a lot of circumstances. Oh, absolutely. A thousand times over. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, really quick, what have been some of the challenges that you've run into that you didn't expect to over the course of 11 years? Um, not understanding, again, this goes to something comes up and mm -hmm. you don't know what's going to happen and you work through it anyway. Yeah. You just can't, it's so cliched, but you can't always know what you don't know going into starting a business. Absolutely. And as you scale with employees, mm -hmm. there are things like work comp premiums and you mm -hmm. go, okay, we were paying a premium based on a hundred grand. Mm-hmm. And our, our payroll all of a sudden went from that to 250. And then mm -hmm. you get a bill for your work comp premium after your, you know, to, to catch that up. Sure. And so then you're behind the eight ball for uh, a year, two, three, catch sure. and that, and that's fine. And financially everything's great. But to say there are lessons in, there are things that you're not going to know that you're not going to plan for. That was one of the challenges uh -huh. is as you scale with employees. Right. And as a side tangent, Every one of the people that do work for us are payrolled employees. Mm -hmm. They are on workman's comp. They are insured. Okay. Um, all no of this business. No subs or anything like that. Exactly right. So right. they're all payrolled employees. And the reason that we set it up that way mm -hmm. is because we can control training and discipline. Mm -hmm. And we can treat everybody e equally. Sure. Um, when it comes to reviews, when it comes to influencing behavior, all that stuff, that you just can't do that with a subcontractor. No. And a lot of painters do, quote unquote, subcontract someone who they then pay 40 hours a week to work for them every day. Right. Right. Um, that's a whole different problem. And hopefully they never run into that. But that could be disastrous for them down the road. But that kind of stuff, you know, drawing a line and saying, this is so much more expensive. I could put X percent more dollars in my pocket tomorrow mm -hmm. um, if we set it up this way. Mm -hmm. But to hold the line and say, you know what, if we have a vision for the future of what we really want to do this has to be done this way and it mm -hmm. has to be done correct and it costs a little bit more. Right. So meandering through that and the HR and the, the employee issues that can come up, mm -hmm. um, it's, it's, I've learned just as much as anyone else has. Sure. Um, and it's not, I'm not there. I mean, but we're just improving no. the process. No, 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 none of us are. It's right. like men understanding women or women understanding right. men. Just yeah. Solving the employee it, thing is just not going to happen. No, it's not. 100% anyways. Exactly right. But you can you can pick up some really good lessons that give you some metrics where you go. Hmm, Absolutely. That goes bad. I can see that. I've, I've read this book before. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I've seen it happen. Awesome. Mm -hmm. What are some of the secrets to success that you picked up along the way? It's all about being able to have a decent amount of social intelligence to know what people really want from you. Mm -hmm. Social Elaborate on that a little bit because there's probably some people. S to me, it's like reading the tea leaves behind people's words. Sure. Because I think, I don't remember what it is, but it's like 7% of our communication right now is verbal. Mm -hmm. And the rest is our inflection and the rest is our body language and all yep. that stuff. This is mm -hmm. why text messages go bad for so many people because you don't quickly. really know what people mean. <laughs> yes. But to me, it's it's... Not only me understanding what someone's really asking for, no matter their words, mm -hmm. with their body language and all that stuff, to get to the bottom of what problem are they really trying to solve or mm -hmm. what am I really here to do for them? Mm -hmm. And then building a culture around that that stays palpable to our clients and customers. Sure. That they still develop that muscle to, mm -hmm. to, to serve a space or serve a situation. Yeah. And have the sort of the social IQ to know what to do with that. That's huge. Yeah. Is that, do you hire for that as well? When I hire for that, it's usually a person who doesn't know how to paint, but possesses that. If okay. someone is humble, 
hungry and smart, mm -hmm. then we want to take them on. And smart is the is the emotional intelligence. Sure. Piece. Oh, that's awesome. That's huge. Mm -hmm. Ha. So what's what's up for the next eleven years of bronze painting? Um, basically just uh, I I would like to be. Well, getting back to mission and vision. Mm -hmm. So our, our, our mission every day is to create the very best possible experience or an awesome experience for mm -hmm. our employees and customers. Awesome. And so in our vision for the future, without putting dollars and cents on it, sure. is to um, sort of lift or raise the standards of the painting industry in our community. Okay. One brawn painting project at a time to show people how well it actually can go. Sure. To show what a great fantastic experience that can actually be that sounds like an uphill but worthwhile battle yeah absolutely awesome. yeah. super cool uh yeah. you have a website our website is brawnpainting.com okay and it's b-r-a-u-n painting painting.com painting. awesome right. and how about a phone number uh my number is 608-770-1070 awesome thanks mike this has been a blast you bet. thank you well been a blast on my end i'm assuming you had fun absolutely too. <laughs> absolutely thanks this has been Authentic Business Adventures, a business program that brings you the struggles, stories, and triumphant successes of business owners across the land. Coming to you from the Sun Prairie Community Studios, underwritten by Bank of Sun Prairie. My name is James Kademan, business coach at Draw and Customers Business Coaching, co-owner of Calls on Call, shared reception of services, and author of the Bold Business Book. It happens to be available on Amazon. We'd like to thank you, our wonderful listeners, and our guest, Mike. Mike from Brown Painting, thanks for joining me. Thanks for it's having me. It's been a blast. I love that you use the word experience when talking about the painting project. Yeah. Instead of just the end project or project. It's actually all it is. Yeah. Name of the game. It's fantastic. That's why I like having guests like you on. Find us airing on 103.5 Wednesdays at 1 p.m., Sundays at 2 p.m., as well as at sunprayemediacenter.com. It's for you people with websites, right? Past episodes can be found morning, noon, and night at the podcast link on drawincustomers.com. Thank you for listening. We will see you next week. I want you to stay awesome. And if you do nothing else, enjoy your business.